has done for us for our many blessings that we enjoy. We're grateful for this place that we live and for the surroundings and the great citizens that live here, and we ask thee to watch over and protect them. Help us as we begin a new year that we might remember thee in our decision-making and strive to do the things that will be best for our community and best for our citizens. We're thankful for those who serve us and who spend time away from their families in storms and winter, as well as those who are serving us in the military. We ask that thou bless them and their families. Bless our youth that we have. Help them to try to be good as citizens and desire to be leaders in our community. Heavenly Father, as we deliberate tonight on decisions and discussions, we pray that we'll have thy blessing and thy spirit to be with us. In these things we pray in the sacred name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sorry about that, Councilwoman <laughs> Kukavas. Uh, tonight we have a uh, first item uh, called to the public. Any citizen desiring to speak on a matter that's within the jurisdiction of the city may do so at this time. Seeing nobody moved, I'll close call to the public and come back to our next item, which is a special event proclamation by Martin Luther <coughs> King Day here. I'll read that proclamation. It says, whereas Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was born on January 15, 1929, dedicated his life to promoting peace, freedom, equality, and justice for all through nonviolent means. And whereas in 1983, the United States government recognized Dr. King's legacy as one of America's outstanding civil rights leaders by adopting the third Monday in January the month of his birth as a federal holiday, and in 1994 designated this holiday as a national day of service. And whereas the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service is observed as a day on, not a day off, to devote to service projects that strengthen communities, empower individuals, bridge barriers, and create solutions to social problems. Whereas the Sholo City Council and the City of Sholo value and encourage community service and will honor Dr. King's teachings by designating a day in April 2019 to devote to one or more projects that will benefit the entire community. Now, therefore, I, Daryl Seymour, Mayor, on behalf of the Sholo City Council, do hereby proclaim January 21st, 2019, as Martin Luther King Day of Service, Junior Day of Service, in the city of Sholo and encourage citizens to volunteer their time and participate with city employees in a service project on April 27th that will strengthen and enhance this community day to the second day of January. Thank you. Uh, it's just one of the things that we encourage our citizens to get involved with here. Uh, it's uh, something I know our uh, recreation department is working on some projects that will help strengthen and, and hopefully will be something in the community that we can all share in and, and see a great impact assistance as we go forward. Next item we have is the consent calendar. I'll look to council members to see if there's anything that needs to be pulled or discussed there. Now, let me read those items first, and then we'll ask for a motion here, okay? Uh, the items that we have on the consent calendar is Consideration of acceptance of the East Thornton and Westwood subdivision roadway construction city of Sholo projects R0319 in consideration of the minutes of the Sholo City Council regular meeting of the December 4th. Look for a motion. Uh, so moved to approve. We have a motion by Council Member Critton, second by Vice Mayor. Any other discussion? All for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? See that, that passed five to zero. Thank you. Next item we have is new business, item 8A, which is consideration of ordinance number 2019-01, repelling section 9-4, public nuisance of chapter 9 property maintenance of the Sholo City Code and adopting resolution number 2019-01, 
declaring as a public record that document titled Article 9-4, Property Maintenance of Chapter 9, Health and Sanitation of the Solo City Code. Mr. Chugaskis. Thank you, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> At the October 30th, 2018 Council Retreat, staff presented information and discussed amending Article 9-4, Property Maintenance, regarding the steps for enforcing codes. Currently, there are three steps outlined in city code for enforcement. First is the judicial procedure. Now, that's the, the uh, procedure that's most commonly used by staff, which begins with a verbal notice to the alleged violator. Uh, the second and third steps, administrative and emergency procedures, respectively, uh, have not been used. When the property maintenance section was revised in 2003, it added establishing a volunteer assistance committee whose members would provide assistance or information to any violators. As stated in the section, it was the mayor's responsibility to appoint committee members, and the Volunteer Assistance Committee was established. The committee was used once after it was formed, but never reconvened after a second case arose. By following the current code, two months can elapse between an informal and formal notice of violation, which is a long time for a problem to remain unresolved. Staff recommends streamlining enforcement procedures by removing the administrative process, combining a verbal notice and an informal written notice into one step, reducing the mandatory 30-day correction minimum to a 15-day correction minimum, and removing the requirement for the Volunteer Assistance Committee. <clears throat> the intent of the proposed changes is to resolve problems before having to file a court action against a, a violator. And just for the council's information, I went through the uh, quarterly reports that we provide to the council. Uh, you don't have the final report yet for 2018. That'll be coming out next week. However, for the first three quarters in 2018, we opened a total of 194 cases. We were able to resolve 156 cases. Uh, and only six of the 194 cases that we opened uh, had to be sent to court. Of those six cases, I think only one actually went to the judge. The rest were able to be resolved between staff and the property owner before it went to the judge. So our intent really is to get these things taken care of between staff and the property owner and not have to involve the judge. Uh, unfortunately, at times that is our only uh, or our last resort. Because the changes affect nearly the entire section, Ordinance number 2019-01 would repeal Article 9-4 property maintenance and adopt a new article. Due to the document's length and to save on publication costs, staff recommends the article be adopted as public record. My resolution R-2019-01 and then adopting the public record through Ordinance number 2019-01. The revised article would take effect 30 days after adoption. What you see in front of you now is uh, the table that's included as part of uh, Article 9.4. You can see that there are three <clears throat> separate categories there, judicial, administrative, and emergency. <clears throat> we are recommending that we get rid of the administrative option. Um, it's felt that that's cumbersome. Uh, it also removes uh, impartial judge from the picture, requires staff to provide uh, estimates of how much that is going to cost to be taken care of uh, and then provides for an appeal process for that uh, that amount uh, what we would what we would recommend is that we focus on the judicial process which has been the pre predominant process that we have used uh, currently we are required to give an informal notice to the property owner uh, that can be difficult to do if they are not home. Um, we end up making multiple visits to the home, sometimes on weekends, to attempt to do that informal notice. What we are requesting is that that informal notice be able to be made either verbally or as a written notice, maybe in the form of a door hanger or something else that we could leave at the property if they are not there. Uh, then we are requesting to remove the informal written notice, they would have already received that. And we would go directly to the formal notice of violation. Uh, currently, they have a 30 days minimum to correct. We're requesting that that be reduced down to 15 days minimum to correct. 
Um, again, as you can tell by the statistics presented earlier, we try to work with property owners. So if we contact them and they have something that's going to take maybe just a little bit longer than 15 days to take care of, we're okay with that as long as we're seeing progress being made. Um, but in some cases, we have property owners that just refuse to do anything. Uh, and so this 15 days would help speed up that process in that instance. The remaining steps under judicial would stay the same. Um, again, administrative, we're requesting that that be removed. And then the emergency would stay uh, unchanged. We have yet to use the emergency process under code enforcement. Uh, with that, I'm available for questions. Council Member Crittenden. It sounded like the original or the first numbers that you gave that a large, large percentage of these things are being taken care of and solved. Is this going to increase in your own mind the amount they're going to be taken care of or is it just a shorter period of time? Uh, I believe it'll do both. Uh, for one, it will free up uh, some staff time. Right now, we are spending a lot of time making repetitive visits to property uh, to verify that they are making progress or not making progress on each one of these steps. Uh, if we're able to simplify the process, that then reduces the number of visits that we need to make to the property, uh, which would free up time for that staff member or those staff members uh, to focus efforts uh, elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, it will, I think, increase the ability for us to. Uh, move forward in a timely timely manner, timely fashion on the properties, uh, and also free up some time to uh, address other issues that we have. And one more question. If their problem is big enough that they can't do it in 15 days, is there anything written in here or anything that you can extend the time? The way that it's written is it's a 15 days minimum to correct. Um, and so they actually, they could have more days beyond that. Again, we work with the property owners to try to get that taken care of. Uh, we've had one, uh, you know, where the individual, this just recently, uh, you know, they had family issues, life, life hit them. Um, they weren't able to take care of things within the time frame, but they have made progress. And so rather than take them directly to court, we're still working with them okay. and they're still making progress. And, and so. We're satisfied with that. Okay. Good question. I have just a question here where the city, you know, before we had the right to, you know, go ahead and clean the property and either foul a lien or something that needed, would we lose that right? Or is there something, you know, in the event that we really needed to take some measures there, what would be the process then? Uh, under the judicial process, we have had two properties that I'm aware of. That we have gone through that exact uh, procedure where we have gone to the judge. We've requested a court order to have the property cleaned. Uh, the uh, property owner did not clean it within the time given them by the judge. The city stepped in, we cleaned it, and then we put a lien against the property. Uh, one of those properties the city has collected on the lien. The other property uh, still remains in the common ownership and has not been sold, so we haven't had the opportunity. But I'm saying, would we lose that step because I see it crossed out here and not going into the new process? No, it, the, you can do it through either the administrative or judicial process. And <clears throat> we like to do is take it to the judge and, and let him see the cost, and then he gets the court order to allow us to go in there. So right. it just seems a fair process. Okay. Any other discussion, <clears throat> questions? Councilwoman Kukavis? Justin, sometimes you see properties that are in disarray for long periods of time, sometimes years. Is that because you're still going through the process? Um, what, what happens when they don't clean it up and you never get to the court? Uh, there could be multiple issues. Um, we receive uh, at a staff level, um, we'll receive anonymous letters, we'll receive anonymous emails, we'll receive anonymous phone calls. Uh, related to properties that people feel are in violation. Um, our code, our, our, our property maintenance code, is not written um, as strictly as perhaps some of our citizens would like it to be. Uh, and so we go out and we look at the property and it's determined that it, 
while it, it may not be as uh, nice or as attractive as maybe some other properties in the area, it does not rise to the level of a violation. Um, those anonymous letters and phone calls and emails uh, are frustrating on our side because we are not able to contact the person who is complaining to say, look, we've been there. This is what we found. This is a violation. These other things are not a violation. Um, and so there are times when you know, we know that there are people frustrated because they, we keep getting anonymous letters, but there's nothing that we can do. Um, there are times when we are working with the property owner to take care of it. Um, and sometimes that can stretch uh, into a fairly lengthy period of time. Um, but again, as long as we're seeing that there is some um, forward progress, we tend to work with them rather than going directly to the judge on. Thank you. Council Member Grant. Is there any um, thing that would take place, and let me give you an example. You have a elderly couple that are disabled, they're still living wherever they're living, and their place is, let's say, out of code. Uh, they are also, and I'm going to give you the worst case scenario, they are also very limited financially as far as not being able to go and have somebody come in and, and do what they're supposed to do. I know that the city in certain circumstances plows driveways, they do this and that and other for people that can't do things on their own. Is there anything written in here where the city would attempt to help these people? Or is it just they have to get it done or they go to court? Um, we have several options that are available, several tools that we can use to help people. Um, we do have the project clean sweep that takes place every year. Uh, we have the bulky item pickup that takes place uh, every odd numbered month throughout the year. Uh, those are tools that are available for property owners. We also have, um, as just mentioned, the uh, Martin Luther King Day of Service. This past year, one of the, I'll call them a, a service team uh, that went out, actually went to the property of uh, somebody who I think probably fit exactly the description you had, where their property needed a little bit of attention and they didn't necessarily have the means or the physical ability to take care of it. Um, that team actually went out and helped uh, clean up that property for them. We also do attempt to put them in contact with various community groups that may be able to assist. Uh, the young Marines have been a big help for us in the past. Uh, we also have some different service organizations, church organizations that we can put people in contact with. Um, our code enforcement officer, Mike, uh, he really, he does try to help people find ways to help themselves through these different, uh, okay. different issues that they have. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? I'll look for a motion uh, for this uh, adoption of this resolution. Make a motion. I move to adopt resolution R 2019-01, declaring as a public record that certain document filed with the city clerk entitled Article 9-4, Property Maintenance of Chapter 9, Health and Sanitation of the Solo City Code. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Councilwoman Collins. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Did that pass five to zero? This time I'll ask the clerk to read ordinance number 2019 01 by title only since all council members have a copy. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Sholo, Arizona, repealing Section 9 4 Public Nuisance of Chapter 9 Property Maintenance. Of the Sholo City Code and adopting that document titled Article 94, Property Maintenance <laughs> of Chapter 9, Health and Sanitation of the Sholo City Code by reference. Thank you. I move to adopt Ordinance Number 2019 01. Motion is there a second? Second by Vice Mayor. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Do that pass 5 to 0. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item, we have a consideration of appointment of associate city magistrate, uh, Shirley Patterson, Judge Patterson, sorry. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. 
just give you a little bit of a background in regards to the purpose of appointing an associate magistrate. Uh, when I'm unavailable or should a conflict arise with a certain case, it's necessary at times to have an additional judge, which would be an associate magistrate available to preside over any magistrate court cases. This is in accordance with the city code. Um, associate magistrates are appointed for a two-year term. Judge Price's contract will end as of January 31st, 2019. Uh, this was extended to allow me to attend training, which is necessary as a new judge. Uh, judge Price will fill in um, for any kind of trainings or in the event that there could be some sort of a conflict case. Judge Price will also be appointed as a Justice of the Peace pro tem for Navajo County. So he would be able to fill in as magistrate, associate magistrate for the Sholo uh, Court and also for the Justice Court as well. I recommend um, Stephen Price's appointment as associate magistrate for a two year term ending January 31st of 2021. Um, I am currently hoping that um, a particular clerk that we have that works at the court that has been there for quite a while and has about 16 years of training with the court system will be appointed as associate magistrate in 2020. However, she was not able to attend NJO this year, so she would not be able to be appointed till next year. So I am currently working on other options as far as an associate magistrate for the upcoming years. After um, Judge Price is done, and well, Steve Price is done January 31st, 2019, any um, services to the magistrate court would run at $45.99 per hour, which is the going rate right now for um, Justice of the Peace Pro Town. Do you have any questions? Any other discussion, questions here? Vice Mayor? Uh, if nobody has anything, I'll go ahead and, and uh, have a, make a motion. Okay. I move to appoint Stephen. Price as, as associate magistrate for the two year term ending January 31st, uh, 2021. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. A bunch of seconds. So that's the woman kick off. Is there <laughs> a second? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? See that passed by the zero. Thank you, Judge. Next item we have is item 8C consideration of acceptance. Uh, of Governor's Office of a Highway Safety Grant and approval of the associated budget transfer, Chief Shelley. Mayor and City Council, Shelley Police Department received the Governor's, of, Governor's Office of Highway Safety Grant contract number 2019-405D-052 for the amount of $47,000 to purchase a fully equipped police package vehicle. Vehicle provided under the terms of this grant will be fully marked with subdued markings, what they call ghost graphics. To be used for enforcement of DUI, speed, aggressive driving laws, as well as others. The grant reimburses the entire cost of purchasing and outfitting a police vehicle, and there are no matching cost requirements on our behalf. I'm available for questions. Any comments, questions? Council Member Crittenden. I move to accept a Governor's Office of Highway Safety grant for $47,000 and approve the associated budget transfers to purchase a fully equipped police package vehicle. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Vice Mayor. Any other discussion? All for the vote. All those in favor? Is that pass five to zero? Thank you. Put one little color mark on it so it's not a complete ghost. Okay. Actually, <laughs> the sticker from there. Okay. Okay. We'll be able to see it. Then. All right. At this time, the City Council will recess into a special meeting of the Sholo Bluff Community Facilities District Board. To approve the third amendment to district development financing preparation and intergovernmental agreement with the Sholo Bluff Community Facilities District. This time I'd like to call a special meeting of the Sholo Community Facility District Board to order. By roll call, see that we have uh, five board members present with uh, board member Leach and board member Kelly absent. Uh, we, we have a cons uh, first item we have here is a consideration of resolution number 2019 01 approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a third amendment for the district development financing participation and intergovernmental agreement of the Sholo Bluff Community Facilities District. Uh, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mayor and Council. 
I'll try to keep the background real brief. It was probably a little longer in the staff summary, but just wanted to give you the background that in 2005 is when we first entered into an agreement with the Sholo Bluff uh, community. And that in, in consisted of various LLCs, as you can see there in your packet, Sholo Ryzen LLC, Sholo Bluff LLC, Sholo Bluff 2 LLC, Sholo Bluff Development Corporation. And there was various entities at that time. Since then, we've done a couple of amendments um, to clarify certain things. The last one we did was in 07, when we requested a letter of credit from Sholo Bluff in the amount of $300,000. This uh, third amendment is really a fairly simple amendment. <clears throat> Since that time, the property ownership out there has been combined into one LLC called SRH Holdings LLC. So all these other LLCs that were initially on the initial one have been <coughs> dissolved or no longer own any property out there. So the purpose of this third amendment is to remove those from the LLC. It's now just SRH Holdings LLC. <clears throat> In addition, at the last amendment, we had asked for a letter of credit. As you'll recall, we had to um, call on that letter of credit, and we took um, that $300,000 and put it in an account here for a while until um, we were able to stabilize the situation out there, and then the developer did um, do the improvements. We released that letter of credit and money to them, so there's no longer a letter of credit here. And then you'll remember, I think it was last year, the developer paid off all the assessments. So this third amendment is really just to kind of clean it up and remove the other LLCs and remove any reference to a letter of credit that they needed. And that's it. So it's fairly simple. If you have any questions, I'm any questions or comments. I'll look for a motion then. Council Member Crittenden. I move to adopt resolution number R two o one nine dash o one, approving and authorizing the ex execution and delivery. Of a third amendment for the district development, uh, financing, participation, and intergovernmental agreement, Sholo Bluff Community Facilities District. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Board Member Hatch. Any other discussion? All for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? See that passed five to zero. Next item we have is the consideration of the minutes of the Sholo Bluff Community. Uh, District meeting of the June 19th, 2018 meeting. So moved. We have a motion by board member Alsop. Is there a second? Second by board member Crittenden. Any other discussion? All those in favor? See that pass five to zero. Uh, any other comments or business for this board? Seeing none, I'll close this uh, special meeting of the Shallow Community Facility District Board. Now back to our regular uh, Sholo City Council meeting. Uh, we looked at a summary of current events by council members. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just went uh, attended a uh, Main Street board meeting and uh, we're finished up the year with uh, great results. And we're looking at uh, about seven or eight things, uh, trying to get in order of what we want, what we like to do for the city in the next year or two. And so we have a, a five or six things that we'll probably bring to the city manager and to the mayor to let them know what we're looking at doing. Uh, and then also was a on the main, uh, Meals and Wheels Senior Center uh, board meeting and uh, finished up the year. Uh, they've been on vacation and this, this week they've been back on. So serving meals still and opening up the senior center. So everybody's interested, uh, come on down, have a hot cup of coffee and some cookies and donuts and enjoy themselves. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other council members? Councilwoman Kakavas? I'd just uh, like to say Happy New Year to everyone in our community um, and our employees. Thank you for all your hard work uh, during the storm and keeping us all safe. And Thank you. Appreciate their efforts. just want to say thanks for being courteous out there and patient. So it's been great, great snowstorm. Current time city manager for his report. Happy New Year, and with the new year, we we had a pretty good storm, as everybody knows. And that winter weather has resulted in delays and changes, including waste management's normal collection schedule this week. 
For those with a Tuesday pickup, the service date is moved to tomorrow, Thursday. Those with a Wednesday collection is moved to Friday, and those with Thursday collection are, is moved to Saturday. And the regular trash service is re expected to resume next week at the, uh, on the regular schedule. If there are any changes, we'll post them on our website and our social media and on the radio. And because of weather, um, we also had to cancel the annual Deuce of Clubs drop, and we apologize for any inconvenience that may have caused anybody. I don't know that many people would have showed up based on the weather that evening. We also want to thank everybody for their patience as our crews deal with the snow removal and icy conditions. Our employees, especially those in public works and public safety, continue to work diligently and around the clock to ensure everyone's safety, including helping those invo involved in slide-offs and accidents, which they had many the last few days. Anyone who wants to recycle a Christmas tree has until Sunday, January 6th, to drop it off um, with the lights and decorations removed within an area bordered by the orange construction fence at the north end of Frontier Parking Lot. On ninth place, those trees will be then taken to Noble Power and in Snowflake and used for as biomass fuel. And staff's beginning the process to prepare for the city's annual budget for fiscal year 2020, which covers July 1st, 2019 through June 30th of 2020. In addition to a budget session with the city council on Tuesday, January 15th at 6 p.m., we'll be hosting a town hall budget meeting specifically for citizen input the following Thursday on January 24th at 6 p.m. All the budget meetings are held here in the council chambers and are open to the public. For a full list of the meeting dates, you can go to our website at sholoaz.gov and it'll list every budget meeting that we have scheduled at this time. And as we begin the new year, our recreation department has begun selling tickets for the daddy-daughter dance for girls 1 through 13 on Friday, February 1st from 6 to 8 p.m at the city campus gym on East McNeil. Tickets are $6 per person. And registration is also open at, um, for the 2019 barbecue throwdown, taekwondo and winter pickleball. For any of the events of the recreation department, you can contact 532-4140 and get more information. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, is Larson Waste changed there? Pick up dates at all, do you know? If you heard anything? We, we don't know because our contracts with waste management no. just for the residential so we know we think waste management commercial was normal but we don't know about what larson any other comments or discussion do you know other uh scheduling of meetings or any meetings uh need to be noted we have we do have legislative day on the 17th, 17th of january for annual run to the valley and so anything else all right Seeing no other discussion, I'll close this meeting.